Hey, this is Suchu, and with me is Skim, and your average esports podcast is back. This is episode 21, and this time, there is like a shit ton of news. Is like, it actually 21? Are we related to 21? I don't know, man. I, I just assume it's 21. I haven't <laughs> actually counted. I want to say we're past 21, actually. I okay. think we're past 23. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Doesn't really ma- but... Listen, if you actually saw the... Um... You see, a C two history thing I did. I actually think I misnumbered a few of them, but nobody notices. Nobody really cares that much. What matters is the content is coming out, and just look at the date of time. You'll know what approximately what we we're talking about. And this one is uh, going over some stuff in Overwatch League, Dota two, CS:GO, and the Overwatch League stuff will be pretty fast, just because I have a question for Skim. The question is, what do you think of this never-ending? weird like fine culture in overwatch league because there are so many fines so many suspensions so much weird stuff that goes on in that league relative to any other esport i've seen it is absolutely hilarious uh you know there was this point and click you know the like the esports set or whatever yeah uh thing they basically like oh overwatch uh preemptively already suspended everybody just in case you know yeah and it, it's kind of stupid how almost kind of realistic that scenario could be just because overwatch league is sort of going that route at the moment mm-hmm. um i think that honestly like the, the 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 reasons for why they find people and why they have to find people or whatever i don't even care about i think that's honestly fine sort of ish i think that's a little bit questionable because you know, we did see Richard Lewis publish the, or a the pl- version of the um, player conduct. What the, the pl- player conduct? Who knows if they've changed it since then? Probably they've changed it since then, but still, um, let, let's set aside the questionable player conduct. I, I do think it's quite questionable, actually. But let's just address the fact that they obviously, like, the league and the teams apparently don't give a shit about the players. Like, how, how do you not have these players sort of like? Why don't you educate them? Or why don't you give them any more guidance? I think that's the biggest issue right now. Like, these these kids were like, what, last year they're just you and me, except they're just, like, really arrogant because they're a little super good at a game. And they're, like, just super young, brash. You know, they have no they have no guidance. I think I legitimately think they just got picked off the street. Oh, you're, you're playing for thousands of dollars right now. You earn mm-hmm. a huge salary. You're in front of thousands of cameras. And suddenly uh, everything you say is, you know, uh, put on put on blast, and I think most of them just can't handle the can't handle the fame effectively. Yeah, but I mean, here I, I will give them a little bit of a leeway in the sense that like Overwatch League is way more harsh on it relative to every other esport. Like, listen, I've never seen another esport suspend somebody for an emote. Right? <laughs> let's let's be let's be fair. And at the same token, if I was a Korean, because you know how the Koreans hate boosters, because. Basically, boosters are kind of like cheaters in their culture just because they essentially ruin the entire ladder experience. Basically, that's how it goes. And, like, you meet, like, a booster, like, one every two games, one every three games, whatever. Right. So, they're basically, you're basically, like, it kind of destroys the hopes because, like, it, it basically pisses them all off, basically. Right. Right? And look at it from their point. They're like, wait, wait a second, wait a second. You're telling me XQC gets suspended for four games for a tryhard emote. But OGE, one of the most famous boosters of all fucking time, gets suspended for 30 games. So that's like seven and a half tryhard emotes. Like, is that, that's what you're telling me, right? And listen, that's actually... I don't know if I'm actually going to write this, but I think I am going to make a tryhard emote currency for... Currency for fines, for punishments. For, for suspensions and for fines, just to like, just so we can like have a measurable instance. But whatever the case, like, like I actually I agree with you. Like, they... They don't really have uh, these strong mentor figures necessarily. Like I know some of the casters are like trying very hard to be that. Like Monte Cristo, I tried to talk to XQC, didn't work out because XQC is like, you know, a bit crazy. Um, Crumbs, like straight up, like okay, anybody, any any one of you idiots, like trying, like any one of you idiots, like uh, afraid of like some shit, like blowing up in your face, just talk, contact me. I was a pro player once in League of Legends. I know how to deal with this. Just talk to me. My DMs are always open, etc. But like. And then there's, but that that's all true. But there's also like the case of like um, Dallas Fuel, like basically Rashomoning the entire like team. <laughs> like there's no incident that goes by in Dallas Fuel where you don't get like the perspective of like five different people. It's it's pretty funny. But but yeah, basically like it it, it feels weird. Like it feels like maybe it's just because everybody's like so hyper centralized in this league format in uh, L.A. and then. 
on top of that, like, unlike... This is strange, because Riot and themselves are very, like, inhibitive. But this is even more so. Blizzard is even more so, in a sense. So, as... Like, put it this way, like, you can get away with more stuff in, like, Dota 2, or CSGO, or even, like, StarCraft. Like, let's... Did I ever tell you the story of Idra and uh, David Kim? You did not. Okay, so this was back in the early days, the wild, wild west of esports in 2011, basically. And this is what Idris said in a streaming session on Ladder. Like, he typed it out. I was like, David Kim should get violated by a tire iron. Now, listen, that is, like, one of the most inflammatory things you could ever say. I don't condone it, but he didn't really get fined, didn't get suspended, didn't even get punished. It's just out there, right? And if you actually know Idra as a person, you actually, you'd actually realize that's part of his sense of humor. It's like, he's super hyperbolic online, even though he's not like that on land. Basically, as far as I can tell, like, Artosis taught him that. Because, like, they, 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 were, they were like that in Brood War, basically. And I'm just saying, like, that's probably way more harsh than a, what anybody has actually said in Overwatch League. In, in Overwatch League, yeah. Yeah, right? And, and unfortunately, or rather, it's, it's not all unfortunate, but at the same time, you know, time half times have changed and obviously overwatch is a completely different game and i feel like blizzard has facilitated this environment with overwatch where um like if if you wanted to if you wanted to talk about it in a negative way people would say it's like a very sjws game right it attracts mm-hmm. a lot of people that um identify with that culture or rather that 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 uh you know that you know people celebrate the diversity and whatnot in the game, and that everybody's welcome, and you know the, 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 sort of that kind of environment. Yeah, and I'm not saying I, I'm I don't I don't think it's actually necessarily negative at all. And again, I, I think I'm only using the term SGW because I I'm not sure how to else really describe it. But um, yeah, I, I think the, uh, Blizzard just attracts that crowd and attracts that sort of like sort of attention. Mm-hmm. And if you if you look at the if you look at the coverage actually around the Overwatch League. Like a lot of these articles that you see, right, regarding um, whatever sexism or like lack of representation, all these topics that we've co- that we've covered about Overwatch League on the show already, um, these kind of articles never, never appear in Dota Two. Yeah, because Dota Two audiences couldn't care less about all of that. Yeah, um, um, like there's some in CS:GO, but even like like the way the community in CS:GO deals with it is very different. Because like they're because I don't know why, but like basically the articles that do surface like that in CS:GO are terribly researched, so everybody's just pissed off whenever they come around. Like Jesus Christ, did this person even watch the game? Like that's kind of what happens in CS:GO. And there is one thing that does annoy me about all those articles is like I've never actually seen them talk about the game itself, so I don't actually know if they actually watch the game. Like it's, it's kind of weird, right? It's that's kind of weird. Pretty much on point, and that's that's sort of. I think what you that's actually the sort of sense that I also get in Overwatch right now. All all these comments talking about there's actually this one article talking about how um what was it? It was I, I wanna say the author wrote about the audience at an esports event or something. Yeah. And how how the audience felt so I don't know, there was some there's something along the lines of the audience didn't really seem to be there to watch the games, but rather to like posture themselves or whatever be like macho or whatever and to me it was funny because to me the author didn't really seem like a person that was actually there to watch the event themselves mm-hmm. like they like you said never wrote about the game instead they wrote about the people watching it's, it's like you go to an event to spectate other people but not the actual players rather the spectators and i'm not saying you shouldn't do that but at the same time you know if, if you're writing about it i don't know i don't, I mean, I don't know maybe, writing about the game like obviously like Personally speaking, I have always considered the game itself to be like the of the highest uh, order magnitude of importance. So maybe that's just why I have like very different priorities or whatever. All right. So I guess we could just move on. Uh, go on to Dota Two because I think uh, there's been a bunch of tournaments. We'll just talk about a few of them. But before that, we will talk about fucking mad or yeah, fucking mad. I think that's how you're supposed to pronounce his ID. Yeah, uh, fucking mad. Um, basically, on Twitter, he uh, had another fucking mad moment. Uh, very appropriate ID. Goes on and rages at the Reddit, right? Like, basically, he, he loses faith in humanity. 
he every time he reads one of these Dota 2 Reddit posts and he's like, you you guys are all shit. You guys don't know shit. And I hope uh, you will bang your head against the wall. Obviously, that last bit, I am almost certain, is hyperbole. But uh, let us... So, uh, what, do you th- what are your thoughts on uh, fucking Mad's uh, response to Reddit? So, first of all, I understand why he responded the way he did. Because, I mean... I, I just know him as a person. He's just he's just is that kind of person that gets really irritated by you know people having very unfounded opinions on on certain topics, especially when it comes to pro Dota, right? Mm-hmm. Um, he'll be very not necessarily aggressive, but he it's it's just a very touchy top uh, touchy subject around him. Um, but like Boba pretty much perfectly responded to him. That just comes with the job, like these people are angry and are vocal and are like obviously a lot of what they said was honestly really bad and mm-hmm. it didn't make a lot of stuff didn't make any sense a lot of people were just bl- just angry for no reason really um but boba does have a point this comes with the territory like if you if you're a pro player these days you have to accept that you are a person that is in the spotlight you're a person that is automatically going to be subject to a lot of unfounded criticism and a lot of like harsh Quite frankly, I, I do think that esports people have it considerably nicer than other people because at least in esports, the fans are somewhat aware that the esports people, like the pro players, can be reached in a lot of ways. So a lot of people are a little bit more tame. Obviously, it does also... It, do, it does other... depend on the person. It does depend on the person, right? Like... But at the same time, I feel like like in your fan base is still, quote-unquote, like just, let's say, just a million people, right? Mm-hmm. In, in other or in traditional sports, that's like what, three hundred times that number. Yeah, actually, that's probably a little bit of an exaggeration, but still. Um, but yeah, he, he, I feel I feel like fucking Matt has just has to accept at this point that this is sort of like the world he's he's been living in for years now. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's he's been making this complaint for years as well. So I, I get why he's frustrated. Um, Adam or three for three, um, he's a really good dude. Like he's one of the nicest guys you'll come across. Like he couldn't hurt a fly. He's just genuinely, he just wants to play Dota. He's just really passionate. Like, he was heartbroken after he got, he didn't find a proper team after TI6, TI was it, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, like, just a super nice guy. So, I, I think this is one of the reasons why Matt was really mad at the, at Reddit is because the person that they basically took their anger on was the person that sh- actually doesn't deserve it at all, like, 3 for 3. Like, they literally just shit on 3 for 3, even though he doesn't deserve it at all. Like, even if he was the weakest link in that team, it's still not his fault. Like, it wasn't his decision to just play that event. Or it probably wasn't his decision. It was partially his decision. Like, as in he, like, accepted it. But I don't know if, like, he was the guy who pulled the trigger, right? I mean, and he's... he's. I'm, I'm not even sure if he could pull the trigger. Like, I'm not sure if he could, by himself, make that decision and be like, like Yo, guys, how about I play this? Like, listen, it's like Fnatic. All the other Fnatic players... Because I'm talking about, like, Org, the players, and him. Like, they all have to agree on some sense. But, except for Pilot Die, obviously. I don't think Pilot Die would have been down for that. But we can talk about that a little bit later. Uh, as for this fucking mad thing, I will say, like, I do get the point, like, uh, sometimes you get a bit better. Sometimes you can get it a bit worse. Like, for instance, like, uh, you see the uh, Richard Lewis by the numbers thing the last time? Where he basically talks mm-hmm. about, like, when he was doing, uh, for E-League, right? The FGC events. Like, right. basically what would happen is like a bunch of pros or the community in general or or like some casters would be like man you're a racist you're a bigot and like there's no there's no um evidence for any of that and then they would send him death threats they would constantly harass him and then like what and then they not only would they harass him they would harass anybody that was associated with him they're like uh say jam rip z like all those uh tasty steve all those guys that did work with him like they're like why aren't you guys like uh flaming Richard Lewis, like, et cetera, et cetera. And they're like, because uh, they probably like him in real life, is my guess. Like, they even invited him down the final round. And then, like, apparently he got so many death threats. And it was final round, if you don't know, is Atlanta, where it's, like, an open gun area. Basically, you can just carry a gun anywhere. So, like, he got so many death threats. Like, he had asked security, is it even fine if I go down? And they're like, no, it's probably not good because you probably get, like, you could probably, you'd probably be in danger of your life if you actually went down there. Because if you don't know, like, FGC, like, they can it can be very dangerous. Like, I did hear a story, like, uh, from the early days where, like, somebody did pull out a gun after losing a game. So, 
basically what I'm saying is like it can be fucking dangerous and there is like like I'm not gonna give a break necessarily because I think um if you actually go out of your way to like uh talk shit to somebody like and I don't mean like a reddit thread but I mean like you go on like twitter you like message them directly like at fucking mad you are a piece of shit or whatever like I think it's actually fine for that person to like flame flame you back I think that's just Maybe, maybe I'm just too old school in that sense because I've always, I've always felt like that's how internet culture should work. It's like, listen, if, you, if you're going to flame me, I can flame you back. Like, that, that's just how it goes, right? But, like, I, on the other hand, I do agree, like, if you're talking about, like, these Reddit threads, these community threads where discussion happens, like, there's no particular reason to, like, engage in that, right? Yeah, it's, uh, no, you definitely have a point there. Um, and... You know, I'm not sure if you if did you read the thread where basically Reddit reacted to fucking Mad's reaction? Uh, no, um, I didn't see it. I, I do think a lot of them brought up some good points because you know, again, I I understand fucking Mad's position, but at the same time, like him pointing out that a lot of the people criticizing players and teams, the, like not understanding those dynamics or whatever, just because of, like 2K and more redditors, whatever, whatever, mm-hmm. um, like. You don't need to be like a pro player to in order to criticize other pro players. Yeah, and um, he he, I'm I'm pretty sure Matt knows it, and I think I'm pretty sure if he had you know taken the time to properly formulate a proper uh, tweet, which you know it was uh, a very emotional. Uh, fucking Matt does not do those. Let's be real, yeah. like he doesn't do those. <laughs> Most pros don't do those. Most pros don't do those. <laughs> Most pros just are very emotional social media people. Um, no, but. Again, I think I think Bulba just really uh, made a really good point. LD also made a really good point that this just comes with the territory at this point, right? Mm-hmm. And um, it, it is very much on the person themselves to choose not to read those comments. As as easy as it may be to say it, um, it's obviously not an easy choice not to just read it. Like Bulba said, uh, I'm pretty sure this is something we're going to talk about next anyway, like yeah. his blog post, where he talks about building a habit of um, reading those comments after games pretty much every day anyway um i mean he did I mean, again it, it's built up from dota to one when it didn't matter but it, it, it's continued right exactly and, and that's that's the thing for most people in in the dota 2 scene like you you'd be surprised how many how many even the new pros basically have been fans of the game fans of the scene for such a long time that a lot of them have been active on forums for example kit track the new and it's sort of like new na Dota sort of up and coming support slash potentially even IGL um, or captain rather. Mm-hmm. He has been on Dota buff forums for years. He's been like a fiend. Like he's literally been one of those Dota buff people. Like if you go on Dota buff forums and ask for like the like the the usual people to hang out, he usually he was one of those people. But obviously now that he's gone pro, he's sort of like tried to stay away from that. And uh, I, I'm pretty sure you could say this about pretty much everybody. Obviously, this is splintered or, across forums. Most of them were like NA Dota, for example, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Join Dota back in the day. You could look, you could find threads from Matumba Man on 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 Join Dota asking for people to um, scrim with, basically. Like, oh yeah, anybody want to play? Like, I'm like I'm like a five game or more carry player or offlaner at the time, uh, looking for a team. And pretty much everybody in the scene right now has at some point been some sort of like form fiend. And some fanboy. There are some exceptions, of course. You know, Miracle never watched TI, for example. God damn it. Um, hey, uh, Prodigy level talent. Why, why would he work out about the rest of you? <laughs> right? Yes. Like... Yes. No, but uh, yeah, everybody's a fiend in Dota, and uh, it's it's difficult to not read those comments. And it's quite frankly, it's. I think it's even worse when it's not about you. Like, I think if it's about you, I think it's almost easier to just look away but when you see like, your friends getting trashed i think that's like really gets to you because mm-hmm. um you know what it's like going through that so that's why i think mad was so emotional as well yeah okay yeah, i guess we may, we may as well uh move over to the boba thing so boba yeah. did a twit longer uh on his twitter pretty in classic em- esports fashion yeah uh pretty brutally honest and candid about his experiences in the dota 2 scene and the dota 1 scene i guess and pretty i think it's just good to read overall like it's typical like sam i guess like i don't i don't know how you describe it but like he's he just can't stop being like honest in a sense i'm not it's very much him yeah uh not like i've ever met him it's just like all the interviews you've seen all the way he plays like it's pretty 
you can pretty much tell he wrote this like without without thought or like editing like it's hard to say right yeah. You know what really gets me about Boba is always his his memory. He memorizes a lot of really weird things, and maybe he just has good memory overall, right? But he will be able to tell you, like, 2013, IG versus LGD in the final of that tournament, they were had 25k, and then they did that comeback yeah. and because of that smoke or that ward. That's the kind of stuff that Boba knows, and you can tell in this sort of, like, blog where he talks about all these events like you know the key elements where he where he uh, that he brings up like um obviously the the stuff with the boot camp and his mom mm -hmm. um but obviously uh, even later you know the, just the fact that phil was the one to cheer him up like the fact that chill that he was also uh phil was also the one to or the one he called first when he got that offer from uh liquid um from liquid um i don't know there's a, there's a lot of things that i think is worth reading if you want just want to get like a feel for the scene and even for, for Bulba in specific but I, I think what makes it even better is the fact that you I, I think it's safe to say that this applies to a lot of people in the scene actually a lot of pro players in the scene um, the sort of like there's a lot of uncertainty at times there's a lot of um, there's a lot of things happening at once often that we don't get to see like I, I don't think he meant it, uh, meant it as an excuse the, the fact that his mom was in, in you know in an accident just before mm -hmm. he was supposed to boot camp with the team but it does put things into perspective and i think there's a lot of things that we just don't consider when we look at raw performances um certainly not when you know well that's um, like one of those things you couldn't you couldn't consider though it's like it's not it's not known. obviously obviously i'm not and i'm not saying that any time we're talking or criticizing about a player we should be you know oh what if his sister got into an accident or whatever uh, but that's not what I'm saying. But rather, I'm saying that I, I think it's great that he came out with this because it does put things into perspective now. Like I think down the road, if we look back on this Bulba Liquid performance, I think people will talk about about it completely differently than they, what they've done uh, than how they've done until now. Because until now, it's been well, Bulba definitely wasn't a good fit for them. He just wasn't a good four player as well. Like he was just individually not good and yada yada yada. Now, while it's still true, you kind of have to wonder, you know, was his mind somewhere else? Was he maybe not as focused? Couldn't he focus? And obviously, I think we can all agree that I think this was an impossible situation for him. Yeah, like, uh, there there are very few instances like, where, like, uh, you can power through that. And I don't necessarily know, like, I don't necessarily think you should be able to, you know? Like, obviously, there's, like, uh, the double F thing, if you didn't hear about that, like, his entire tragedy still won like the tournament but it's like you like even if he didn't win like you still give him that caveat right like it's a very it's a very difficult thing to go through and so how you balance that how 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 those things go it all it all kind of interweaves and yeah there on the other hand like uh like it, it's always hard to just think about the personal stuff you know like and how 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 that comes into the put into play like Obviously, the one I always go to is like MVP. Like, we find out we found out like six years later, like the extent of his injuries. Because basically, like I was like I was like the guy like on those forums like defending MVP. He's like, listen, guys, he he clearly said he had he has like injuries. You just see his game. He he's like broken down. He's not nearly as good as he once was. Six years later, he like he he basically says, oh yeah. So basically, what happened was I had five slip discs in my spine, two of them in the neck, three of them in the back, and so I was playing with that for like years. Like Jesus Christ, like that's not normal right so like it, it's always it's always like um like these are things you have to consider and but y how can you consider them if you don't know right so and do you even want like if you were the players yourself would you even want that information out there it's like it's it's like a very uncomfortable situation at times and i think most of these people are like true competitors where they don't want this to be made into an excuse, and I think none of them would ever want it to be used as an excuse, and I think that's why most of them, w w you know, when we find out these stories, most of them come out very late after it's already happened. Yeah. Like, I think, I don't think Boba, for example, would have ever mentioned this, e e even if, like, a year after it happened to him, actually, it's almost... Well, yeah. Even if just like a half a year after it happened to him, it, let's say the same situation happens, fucking mad goes ape shit on Twitter. I still don't think Bulba makes a blog post because, again, it it probably was just not the time. But right now, you know, it totally hasn't affected him for a long time now. Obviously, he's sort of moved past it, and it's not something that he needs to use an excuse at all. And I think the same with MVP, of course. You know, um, I think if you're a true competitor, you don't want it 
to you don't want to bring it up because at the same time you also don't want it to be in your head at all like mm -hmm. this should never be an excuse this should never be a distraction if you bring it up once people are going to constantly mention it yeah. like if Boba had brought it up right after he got kicked from liquid you bet your ass he would have been interviewed a lot of times about that situation and nobody it would have been a... yeah like it's it's such a bad like, thing to talk about no right like and uh... it doesn't and it doesn't change the result either mm -hmm. like it, it really doesn't change anything so might as well not talk about it yeah after the fact sure but at the time it just doesn't change anything if you talk about it so i think yeah. it makes a lot of sense to just not bring it up at all okay so uh back to minor things let's talk about uh dac right because i talked about this with Tao. But uh, you weren't around because you were too busy with complexity stuff. So what did you think of this yeah. tournament? DAC had, in my opinion, one of the worst formats in the history of like DAC or general. Like all these, if you compare all the big tournaments, and I'm not saying major, but big tournaments, I really dislike this format. Actually, mm -hmm. it's not as bad as say Swiss PGL format, yeah, or like yeah, it's it, it could have been worse for sure. But two things that really, like the the double lower bracket elimination best of one rounds like why are there two of them one of them is already bad having two of them is should not be possible mm -hmm. um like virtus pro beating v v uh, vici gaming probably sh could have happened even in the best of three but the tnc beating liquid in in a best of, in a best of three is just i don't want to take anything over from tnc but i feel like that would have been a very tall order for them mm -hmm. and I mean, Envy posted on, about it on Twitter. Like, Liquid's top four streak gets broken because of best of one. Yeah. This just shouldn't happen. Um, I, in, in general, I like the breakout format, actually. The the whole, like, single limb bracket before the double limb bracket begins. Yeah, that's pretty I actually cool. Because like it's a best of three, so there's no excuses, really. Exactly. I, I really like that. Um, I, I think we, we saw a lot of stuff at this event that um, sort of shows you the coming months i think liquid i think lgd and mineski needed this event desperately mm -hmm. um to boost their confidence and get them points obviously obviously the points uh i still think and this is something that uh, i think a lot of pros will agree with is that the, the the fact that the patch hits just before dac is like a huge factor or in general, like patches coming in so frequently and now also being still very huge. Like if it if it only changed a couple of numbers, I don't think it would be a big deal. But suddenly you add Dark Willow or something. Like I, suddenly you add Pangolier. That's really funny um, to me. It's like because uh, the way they described it, like yeah, man, we're just gonna do small some small adjustments. It actually turns out like each patch is huge, in a sense. <laughs> yeah, each patch is significant, uh, significant really, and you could tell because Mineski suddenly showed up and. I don't want to take anything away from them. Hey, listen, I, they, I think... they, they fixed a lot of things that didn't have to do with the patch first. Like, I'll be honest with that. Because they hit a strategic dead end before then. True. But still, I, I do think that if, if the ha if the patch happens two weeks before that, I don't think Minetsi comes out baller like this. Like, if... Obviously, everybody is sort of in the same position where everybody has the same amount of time to prepare for things. But at the same time, not everybody has the same amount of time because other teams are traveling more. So... Teams like Secret, Liquid, Newbie, VP are automatically at a disadvantage mm -hmm. in comparison to other teams. Especially against teams like Mineski that are almost good enough to be at most LAN events, but not good enough still. So they only get to like every second good LAN event yeah. effectively. They will automatically have that advantage um, over these teams, especially with these new patches. So when you when you saw like... But this, this, the best... this, this particular patch though hit mid-tournament, right? Well, yeah, but at the same time, it's it's more about what was it? Uh, but the difference here, here, here's the point: the difference, though. Like those other guys are traveling. Mineski spent like two weeks under coach seventy one, like, and him bashing into head like uh, Moon's head how to play these new hero, different heroes, basically, right? Because basically, uh, Moon before this tournament, he was only playing Josh. Mirana and Puck, and then Moon during this tournament, he was playing all all different kinds of uh, heroes. Like, uh, let me check real fast. We, he, he actually uh, expanded his hero pool by a lot. I, I don't even think he played Murano or Puck this entire tournament. He was basically a Shika going into uh, into this event. Or going into... Or yeah. at previous events. Yeah, and then, events. like, uh, 71 fixed him. Like, 71 took that broken car and... Uh, I mean... Made him, made come him on. Winning no, workable. Uh, again, I don't want to take anything away from 71, but... 
I, I I feel like everybody in this entire world could have told Moon, "Yo, you need you need to expand your hero pool." Obviously, it depends on listen, man. How you tr how you the, expand the it. other four players on that team didn't tell him for months. That's all I'm saying. That's apparently. all I'm pointing yeah, out. Apparently, <laughs> um, I I think what was really apparent at this event is that a lot of teams didn't have the sufficient experience with uh, Pangolier. Yeah, uh, um, turns out Ice 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 is just playing that shit all the time, waiting for I, his moment. <laughs> see, that's that's the thing. I, I think you could totally tell that teams that didn't travel to a lot of these LAN events had the most and best practice with the, with that hero, like Maneski and Optic. Like I Zai think, and I think Ice those Ice. are the only two teams, to be honest, that used it well, right? Like exactly. Zai and Ice right? But that's that, but that's that, that's kind of the point, though, right? Mm -hmm. like, the fact that all these other teams just didn't really have the time, or the players on those teams didn't have the time, and to there was no like hero. incentive to do it for them. Because they, exactly. they didn't know it was coming in. Yeah, and if you're if you're like a hardcore pubber though, you like definitely spend that hero at some point, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I, honestly, the fact the, the way Zai and Ice Ice played that hero just showed that this hero needs to be a core meta pick for most teams mm -hmm. at some point. Um, and this is where this is where I think Mineski and even OG to a degree just had a huge advantage going into this tournament. Yeah, uh, but this is sort of. Where the, where the scene is at right now, every two weeks is going to be some sort of like, not necessarily reset, but it's going to be a soft sort of like re, well, a soft reset in that sense. Where or it could be a big one. It depends. It's like really random. It's really random, yeah. Like last last week's patch, or yeah, last week's patch. I still don't know how how huge that patch is going to be in terms of like impact. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, we did have Solider, so we kind of could have. Not Seen really, it, but not really. Starter is like, no, that was not a good event. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so... With all those caveats aside, though, what did you think of Neski this tournament? The, they look sharp. Uh, I think it's really important for them to just gain some confidence, Mushi and Isis especially. Yeah, because they, they were about to give up before this tournament. Right? Yeah, and it's kind of crazy to think about the fact that Mushi and Isis haven't actually won a title in, like, forever. Yeah. Um, Amushi especially I says actually with VG Gaming at least had some sort of success mm -hmm. um, I think it was really important for them to win this tournament uh, Jabs, uh, Jabs and Ninja Boogie proved finally that they are really two good. really good supports mm -hmm. like it's difficult to, to, to tell though because obviously at the end of the day it's still just one tournament um, for all we know next tournament they're going to be last place and then you know every, the, the narrative is going to change completely but right now, I think they needed the confidence boost. They showed that at their best, they're definitely like a top six team, 100%, mm -hmm. uh, potentially top four. But they just need to show it more consistently. I think right now, this was a good first step. But um, like we pointed out, Moon, Jabs, Ninja Boogie, uh, even Mushi to a degree, just at, at certain times, they just don't show up. And I think that's the biggest, that's been the biggest problem for Mineski, really. Obviously, in, in addition to like strategic uh, elements not being there for them. Um, but you know, I, I think for now it's still fine for them. Yeah, and shout out, shout out to Ice Ice Ice, still the best offlaner in the world, right? I, th I think he, I think he's had that title for a bit. <sighs> he's had the title for a long time now, and I think there's no way around it. Really, uh, a lot of a lot of people just fall off more significantly, more so than Ice 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 does. At the same time, Ice 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 has the added benefit that most teams that he's part of play around him as well, like they emphasize emphasize him. But I mean. They have to. Who are you going to play around? If, if, if you have the best offlane in the world, you're going to play around him no yeah. matter what. So like, Even Optic understands, like, oh, shit, this 3-3 three, three guys play around this. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, everybody understands. Like, if, you, if you're if you a two-star player, they're going to play around you. That, that That's the point. I think that's... I th and I, and Mineski, to their credit, did that. Like, listen, you don't play around, like... If you have, like, a superstar player, you don't just, like, not play around them. It's weird, right? Yep. Right? Uh, so anything else you want to talk about or you, or you want to move on to the star ladder uh, we can move on to star ladder I think DSC was for the most part actually let me, let me talk about one thing and okay. I guess I'm, I guess this is more of a general rant in, in general but um, once again the CIS and the SA team show that giving them a direct invite or your direct spot rather to one of those uh, events is I'm not going to call it a waste because it's all for the greater good in some way, you know, they get a lot of experience and yada, yada, yada. But man, I just don't see any improvement from any of these teams ever. Well, Navi, Navi died basically when they decided to well, Navi, give up Navi LeBron. Died I mean, not LeBron, ago. they give up Sneeko. And I, I said that, like, the second they did it, it's like, you guys are fucked. 
and they have yeah. proved they have continued to prove that. I I will say like uh, I did talk to Pal about this, but I think I think a decent way to get around this problem is like because obviously, in my opinion, I don't think Valve will ever like go let go of that idea of like each region gets a qualifier spot, right? Like yeah. China will get one, Europe will get one, NA will get one, SA will get one, CIS will get one. So my 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 actual idea was like for the last two spots because I think there's like six total because I think C is like the sixth one. So for the last two spots, you should make it like um, a BYOC open qualifier slot. That'd be dope as hell, right? Because um, like uh, ESL ESL kind of does that for StarCraft Two, like all their IEMs. Like basically, there's like double elimination tournament, and there's like twenty four people inside of them, and then the last two survive basically, and they get to play in the main tournament. Or like the old like Dream Hacks, they do that. Like I, I like. Because when you we when we talk about Dota two, like because it's so regionalized in different areas, and unlike CS:GO, it's not like focused on mostly Europe and NA resident resident like teams. So it's very hard to get a very good gauge of how each of the teams line up, especially with the patches and stuff. So my my opinion is like because there is such strong incentive for DPC points, these teams will pay their own way to get there anyway. So may as well may may as well make it a battle royale for the last two slots. No, I agree, and I think it'd be it'd be pretty interesting. And I mean, in general, I think the the, the qualification process for TI needs to be a little bit, a little bit more multi layered than it has been thus far. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think if if you're not like a top six, top eight team, even even top ten is already a bit of a stretch. You're very much considering changing things going into TI still, yeah. and then everybody's just going throwing all their basket into like the online qualifier. Might as well just put all the unqualified online qualifiers not like like the winners not directly into ti but still have them compete on land somewhere like i've been advocating for this for a long time now mm-hmm. that i think on having like a land qualifier where we don't necessarily care about regional rep like if we already have a certain degree of regional representation like obviously valve cares about that right if we already have a certain degree like let's say the winner of every region gets automatically to ti but then the second place is they still have to play on land against one another to actually make it to TI. Yeah, like, so I, I think, like a super version of the wild card or like the major qualifier in CSGO. Effectively, yes. Yeah. Because I think in Dota right now, it's just way too difficult to tell which region is going to be able to trump the other region. Like a lot of stuff depends on certain like meta matchups. And um, I, I I feel like, for I mean, we've, we've had that actually uh, previously. I mean, CDC, um, when, you, when they qualified for, for TI. TI5, they only got into the wild card because in their regional qualifier, they weren't yet able to beat certain other teams, pretty much also based on matchup, actually, right? They yeah. were just not favored in certain matchups. And imagine you're not, like, imagine if you just draw the short straw against, say, OG, because OG just has your number every time. You're only going to be second in Europe and you don't qualify for TI, but actually you're like the, what? 12th best team in the world then suddenly you don't get to ti because that spot goes to some i mean i've I've made i've been making this argument for a long time now i just don't think that like we should give too many spots to specific regions like even europe and na shouldn't have as many spots available at at some point where china for that matter Mm -hmm. like they should be able to prove themselves against international competition yeah um but you know, I mean, like the like it the, comes at a huge cost as well, obviously. Yeah, it comes at a huge cost. Is like which was like my my idea is sort of like pay your own way, just BYOC, right? Right, like, right. BYOC. Well, you you'll, you'll still have to obviously you, you know pay for the broadcast. And you like, have to pay for the broadcast, but you're not you're not paying for their travel. You're not going to pay for their hotel. Yeah. Like if they, if yeah. they want those points and they really want those fucking points, they will do That'd it themselves. That'd be hilarious. That'd be hilarious. And like I, at the I very least, you're going to get all the local teams, like wherever you wherever yes. you happen to be. So yes. I think it works out that way, because like if just imagine like for whatever reason there's like one in Peru, right? There's like a tournament in Peru or something. Yeah, all the Peruvian teams go, but then every team in NA is gonna think in their minds, wait, this is free DPC points. Let me just what? go yeah, in there, like now. right, like, and then and then all of a sudden you have like a, very, a much more interesting tournament. So and like that's kind of what. Go yeah, ahead. Sorry, go ahead. It's like a pre-tournament uh, to the tournament is my way of saying it. Yeah, that, that's kind of what they do in, um, not sure if you follow that, but obviously in, in Hearthstone, I, I want to say, and in, um, in, 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 Call, in Call of Duty. Yeah. Call of Duty has pools, so they invite certain teams to certain events, right? So you're mm-hmm. guaranteed a spot in the group stage. But then if you want to 
go into that group stage still like they're going to be what well, like let's say eight spots open you can go to the event and then compete in the yes. qualifier at the event mlg so right? you look yeah ba yeah basically yeah no it's actually is mlg yeah i think they're yeah because that's that's like their style of tournament and i honestly think that's a good idea um it's a very fun think... it's a very fun thing to do also, I, I do think it's a fun thing to do, and I think it promotes certain regions because obviously MLG has these events across the world. So they have what Birmingham in the UK, they have Seattle, they have Atlanta, they have like basically you can even promote the game even better that way because you can go to, like you said, you can go to Peru, you can go to goddamn Southeast Asia, you can go to South Africa even. If, if teams are willing to fly out there for those points, they're going to do it. And it saves you a lot of money. Yeah, and my, my, my other opinion is like it actually works with what I assume is Valve's intent of building up these local regions. Because listen, it's great and all that SG Esports gets to go to these lands. But imagine you have one in Brazil for whatever reason. Then all of a sudden all those SA teams could actually have LAN experience. Because they're all going to be playing those fucking BYOCs. Like, right? They're all going to go there. And all of a sudden you're going to have like assuming like they speak english maybe you have like another like conversation where like mvp talks to like loda way back in the day and then they learn a lot from that or yeah. whatever right and on top of that like the best case scenario in my opinion is actually like you get so many teams like let's say like you get 32 teams because it just happens to be in like a very popular region like china or whatever and it's like the last like dbc round so all of a sudden all the other teams that are on the edge show up too like you can actually run a proper swiss no that's actually a really good point you can run proper Swiss. Damn. Like, now I'm hyped for this. Like, it, like uh, basically, like, Kyle's like, oh, yeah, this is like the Magic the Gathering Grand Prix sort of thing. Like, right? Because that's kind of how that one works. Was like, yep, yeah, yeah, like 64 to 128 players. You run an actual Swiss, eight to nine rounds. Last eight guys go to the playoffs. Like, seated. Like, that's that's awesome, in my opinion. So, like, I, I wrote an entire article about it. But, yeah, that's my, that's my like, way to fit. Not necessarily fix, but, like, alter it a bit. So... Like, it fixes some of the problems with the current Dota 2, like, landscape, in a sense. I mean, they're, they're technically, uh, oh, there are definitely more problems, obviously, to to this entire system. Yeah, right like, now. there's a lot of problems. Like, um, and I don't even necessarily think you can solve all of them because of, the, of what Valve wants and, like, what, like, yes. competitive integrity is and all that. Like, it's it's a complicated, like, uh, equation. And obviously, you know, yeah, it... it it's difficult to bring all parties to the table and have everybody leave with their own piece of the cake. Um, like, for example, what PPD is currently uh, criticizing, you know, oh, what, you invite this... OG and EG to your super major and OG what about... OG isn't, even, OG isn't even the fucking thing anymore. There's no point in inviting well, them. <laughs> yes, but at the same time, people... I'm not saying they, they forget, but people tend to ignore the fact that um, these Tatro tournaments... Oh, early? Well, no, that these tournaments are still tournaments, like third-party tournaments. Like yeah. people are still trying to make money off of it. Mm -hmm. They're not running these events for the sake of Competitive helping you yeah. qualify. Yeah, they're yeah they're not trying to help you get to the, get to TI or have the most fair representation of DPC points. They just want good money. They just want to sell out their tickets. Yeah, which is which is why like EG always in there, of course. Yeah, and OG is a good choice as well. Mir oh, not Miracle. Uh, no Tail and Fly are very popular players. Still, like um, Jerex as well. I still think that team is like really bad right now. But yeah, they are very popular players. O OG is a very bad team right now. Like <laughs> they're not even a team. I mean, they're still lacking a fifth player. So that team is currently dead right now. Yeah. Okay. So I guess that's a good transition because we're gonna talk a bunch of, about a bunch of dead teams in Star Ladder. So among these various dead teams, I will go ahead and say I think King One's dead. Navi is dead. SG is kind of dead in the sense like they I don't think they'll improve they've improved but they will get to TI because of the SA thing. Um Fly to Moon I don't, I don't think they're very good. But here's the thing I didn't actually watch it. I just looked at the results like oh they yeah, pretty much lost as expected. Uh this iteration of Fnatic like what they tried, I think that's dead for sure. Like putting Adam on 4 over DJ that's a huge mistake. I don't know what the idea was be that's fucking dead for sure. I wonder who's like. I am legitimately not sure what this entire deal is anyway. Like, why did they suddenly try to do this and like not with Pilot Die? Like, is this like we don't know? Like, I think their explanation for this at all was like very, very vague. 
It, uh, a lot of people are speculating whether or not this means that Pilot A is kicked. I legitimately have no clue because why would you risk this? Like, this is legitimate. Like, Fnatic is a team that could still place top eight for a direct invite. This, these points c could matter. Uh, actually, and then like, I actually don't think these points necessarily matter as much, right? Because I think uh, in order to get enough points to make sure you get in, they have to do very well at one of the majors left. But I feel like Fnatic is a team that is sort of like scratching at that surface where yeah. they could technically place fourth at one of these events. I mean, D uh, TNC just placed fourth. Yeah. And there is, they aren't necessarily that much better than Fnatic. Mm -hmm. So this is where, this is why I'm not sure why they did this just now. I, and I have to wonder if potentially this just means that they are considering making a roster change. With I, mean, they, I mean, they did say earlier on in like the interview, with Eternal Envy about Ohio, like they want, they wanted to kick Pile I Die at some yes. point. So that's very worrisome. Like for like from my point of view, my guess is like they thought they thought in their heads like, okay, we have this minor right this this particular tournament. This is the last time we will ever get to experiment messing around with the roster a bit, and let's look at the field of player of free agents. Adam seems to be three four three seems to be potentially a good choice. Let's see what he does. Obviously, he failed, so we're not going to do this. But if they hadn't done this, this idea of a roster switch to Adam would have been in their minds for the rest of the TI circuit. Right? Fair enough. Fair like, enough. I think that's basically what they're doing. Is like they're causing out a possibility. That, that's my uh, guess. That, that's my guess. That, that, that's a, no, that's a fair point, and I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, they've obvious, obviously been very open, I want to say, with Pilot Eye about whether or not they would want to kick him like mm -hmm. previously already i'm pretty sure he knows I yeah mean, he, he would know at least after the interview that uh, envy did right yeah that he was considered to be kicked i assume that he knew before before that as well so maybe this is something that they all agreed on hey we're not happy with your performance or with our performance with you at the moment and maybe dj look this is the second time that dj has moved to the five position so let us never do DJ this again Let's never do no, this but again. the thing is, but the thing is, maybe DJ himself, sort of like a, I mean, we've seen this from from other players in other positions. They don't feel comfortable in the position that they're playing, even ah, if yes. they are potentially the best player Yoki, in that position. Yes, I remember the Yoki, <laughs> the Yoki dilemma, the Yoki <laughs> conundrum. Um, odds are he doesn't want to play five position or four position support right now, so maybe he wants to move to the five position and. Perhaps Pilot I said, I don't feel comfortable playing as a four. So if you want to make that move, you probably have to do it without me. Or maybe they they thought we couldn't do it with Pi. So you do have a point. Maybe they crossed off two things at once. Like one, replacing Pilot I with Adam. And two, having DJ play as a, as a five position. But uh, I, I hope for them that they're sticking to the roster right now. Because I don't think that any replacement they would make now is going to be better than... What they have right now like i can't see anybody on the market right now that would be an improvement to basically roster. unless they jack um fly from og i don't see an improvement like maybe that could even work. but i don't even think then, it would even then i don't think it would be an improvement i think they like fly i don't think is necessarily the the right player type plus they need somebody that isn't necessarily they need a follower rather than another leader yeah i think so yeah it makes sense okay yeah uh, I agree with you. Like, I think that's that sounds about right. Like, there's basically nobody else you can get at this point. So, I and I guess that the, they're stuck. The, the dice has been rolled. Uh, the other thing we'll talk about, I guess, is Optic won the event. Uh, PPD gives Podcat his first tournament victory in ten years. Uh, right, three three turns out to be the offlaner you always said he was, the uh, glorious offlaner that should have been three. Set of four. Zai remembers... Uh, Zai has basically learned that three is not nearly as fun as he once once was. Has turned back to four. But still plays Pangolier as a three sometimes. Uh, I think I think Zai just realized that if he just plays good enough as a four, he will have the farm over the three. So it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Because uh, um, PBD doesn't take farm at all. So it was great for him. Like he's, He just realized, wait, I'm not on EG anymore. I don't have to fight crit every for every like CS or whatever. Like I'm, I'm not exactly sure what was going on in his head. Um, but yeah, so, so basically, Optic win this, and I think they were the best team at this event straight up. Like um, VGJ Thunder, I have called them chokers straight up uh, many times, many a time. But they didn't necessarily choke that bad. It's just like they, individually speaking, I only think Siler was a great player for them and DDC. 
I think VGJ Thunder is currently on the path to becoming the worst Chinese team in the top sort of like region. Mm -hmm. um, I think heading into TI, they, they probably will be at TI, whether as a direct invite or whether or not they're going to qualify doesn't really matter. But I think they are going to be at TI. But I wouldn't be surprised if they have the worst result out of any Chinese team at TI because right now I think they're actually declining in terms of performance maybe they just need a bit of a break as well because like i mentioned earlier a lot of these teams just don't have a lot of like break yeah time like, off like this can... was a new patch i getting that yeah and like as a team just the way they think it doesn't seem like i'll put it this way they're not, they're not a ppd level of like oh i can adapt and learn throughout the tournament like i don't think that i don't think they have those kinds of players uh, they really aren't uh, they really aren't and they really don't but at the same time i feel like they're like their coordination seems to be even worse than it was before, yeah. and that's mm -hmm. that's what that's the thing that worries me. Obviously, again, it's just one event, so who knows? But I I I, I want to say I noticed this beforehand already, so I think this is something that is a bit of a downward trend, and I think mm -hmm. that's a very negative thing for VGG Thunder. Maybe they should just sit out one tournament because they're already in a good position anyway. But uh, as for Optic, I think Optic is just. I mean, I mentioned this at Katowice already. Like, I think CCNC is getting better as a as an individual performer. And obviously, changing three three to the three position was like a huge thing, and you, I think you could tell early on, you know, at Katowice, even at uh, PGL, even if the results weren't there, the performances were already on an onwards sort of like uh, trend or upwards trend. And yeah. I think online you could tell as well that they're getting much more comfortable with this lineup right now. And I think this is sort of like the result of this, like the fact that three three is just a phenomenal offlaner. Um, he was always destined to be uh, this offlaner. And Zai is still just a king as a four position, and uh, it it sort of elevates everybody else's performances as well. I think yeah. you can tell that CCNC and Pycat are feeling much more comfortable playing in this sort of dynamic. Mm -hmm. And PPD has the one who has led them out of the Valley of Death, so yes. to speak, right? And for 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 now, anyway. Yeah, uh, I will say I I, th I still think you can upgrade CCNC, just not with anybody on the market right now. Like I don't even know who you would take at this point. Yes, I think if you had wanted to replace CCNC, you probably should have or wouldn't would have needed to do it very early on. Not not early on, but like before the previous roster, like before the last roster lock. Mm -hmm. um, you could have argued whether or not Weha would have been an upgrade. I uh, think Weha has, his, like iffy. Weha has his own issues, but I think that he, unlike so the thing is for me at least anyway, if you set up Weha to have like a good game, he is very likely going to carry you. I just don't see that with CCNC right now. I think. Weha, if you give him like a good hero matchup, for example, mid, he's very likely gonna crush it as well. Like if if you draft him and set him up to win his lane, he will win his lane. Mm -hmm. With CCNC, I legitimately don't see that. Like I've seen him lose matchups that he should have won. Um, yeah, like it's and, not it's not it's not a good look. Basically, like he's a very obvious person you exploit on optic. I don't know. But you know. And just just to just so that the the fucking mads out of uh, out of our viewers don't get too mad about this, who knows? Maybe CCNC has some sort of like internal input that elevates the rest of the team. I doubt it, but it might be there. Maybe. May, I mean, he is still pretty young. It's just like I've I've seen enough of him to think like this is generally going to be his level for a while. So unless like he gains. Like basically, if he like go, comes out of nowhere, like that would be great for the team. But if he doesn't, I think this team has like a hard ceiling to it. Yeah, I think if anything, from here on out, this is where it's going to matter because the pressure is going to be on Optic right now. Like people are going to be once you win a tournament, the the spotlight is going to be on you, and teams are going to prepare for you in a completely even, different way. Like, even this gonna... tournament, though, like this tournament was not big. I I I I know this tournament was not big. Like I'm not sure. Did did you see the Kyle and? Uh, yeah, capitalist yeah. pre uh, post show. Yeah, Kyle was like, like, "This is shit." <laughs> yes. Kyle was like, "This is shit." I'm not gonna do uh, replay analysis yeah. for this. Yeah, some had, had um, a great eternal envy impression. I remember it was, it was hilarious. Um, I I agree. Like this event was not that great in terms of like skill or performance, even. But still, I think teams are gonna take them a little bit more serious now because I think three three has. I'm pretty sure most pros knew anyway that 3-3 was like a beast offlaner. I think if you've seen Singularity or Kingwin or whatever, no, not Kingwin, um, Hellraisers before, you you knew that he was already a, a really promising offlaner. But I think now people are going to be aware that 3-3 and Zai, I think if you look at three position, four position combos right now, mm -hmm. I almost want to say that like a top six, top eight, combo at least like top eight at least i almost want to say top six in that regard like i'm looking at you know like gh mind control 
I'm looking at the. I actually can't think of many more right now, just because. Ice, ice, ice now. jabs. Ice, ice, ice jabs. KP, Kaka. Like, if you look at these combos, because obviously they do a lot in the in the game, right? The, the offlane or in the mm -hmm. four position, they tend they tend to play a lot together. I think Zion three three right now are like a top six sort of like duo in that regard, and this is a dangerous duo to have. And if you give Pycat and CCNC enough space in that regard, I mean, even. Even CCNC is going to carry you at some point. Like I don't want to trash on him again. I do think he's a very talented player, and he, he like, and at his best, he has shown really do damn good performances. It's just a matter of being able to consistently uh, play Prove at it? that level. Like he hasn't, he yeah. hasn't done it. Basically, that's my problem. Yeah. Like you're talking about like online games and stuff. Like even in the online games, he doesn't doesn't necessarily reach that level that often. So that's like my problem with him. But I will say, Optic is on the path that I have predicted them to be on the entire time. Of overtaking EG, it's a, uh, it's trucking along, it's trucking along, and I still believe they I, will outdo EG at least at TI because of PPD. I, right now, I do think there is very good reason to be much more optimistic about OG than it is about EG, mm -hmm. because I think the team is sort of like clicking right now. But you know, it's tough. It's it's tough to say yeah, tough to with tough all, to with all these like crazy patches coming out every two weeks. That's oh, that's I, another thing. That's that's why I'm predicting PBD because unless EG hit gold on that patch, PBD's the got the mind to figure it out. I don't, I don't, I don't see the rest of the guy, EG guys doing it like quite like that. No. So that's 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 my guess. But we we will see. We will see who uh, turns out right at the end. Who was right uh, and who was left. Last trend I want to make about uh, Starlet or Kingwin. I know you've already said that they were dead. Yes. I am very disappointed in this team. <laughs> I thought this team should have been the next. Like, this team should have competed with OG for every line qualifier, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But instead, we have a team that's just utter, not trash, but whenever they do get to LAN events, they get trashed. Yeah. So, to some degree, you could argue that they're trash right now. Mm -hmm. But either way, Kingwin. I don't know, man. It's it's also one of those things where I don't even know how to fix that team, honestly. Like for I, I all I know, needs, this team is just gonna... needs to break up, basically. Yeah, yeah, like, probably. They've they've already hit they've already gone they've already hit their their peak and now it's all downhill. Yep. All right. All right. Moving on to uh, another topic. It's time for CS:GO. Actually, we will talk about another dead team first, and that is North in CS:GO. North, North and CS. Uh, so here, I, here... I, I, go ahead. Yeah, I, I like. Look, I, I read, I feed a lot of Reddit, right? Yeah. I feed a lot of Reddit, no matter which game. And there was a really good thread about all of this, where people weren't even necessarily that aggressive about like North. They weren't even that like mean. It was honestly legitimate criticism in a lot of places where they're like, "Yo, what do you expect from a team that kicks their two best players?" And then gets what? Who did they get? AZ, uh, yes. Um, AZ and uh, yeah, whatever. Um, I don't know. That team is just so dead right now. Yeah, basically. Don't see any recovery. Yeah, basically, uh, North reached their height as Dignitas when they had Config, Magisk, Rubino. They let Rubino go for whatever reason, and then slowly shit down. They lost Magisk, and now they willingly, or actually, I don't really know what the fuck went on with that thing. But basically, Config left. Or Config was kicked. Who knows? They brought on Kirby, Falde, AZ. There's MSL and then Mertz, which is like their new young aggressive opera. Mertz has basically failed, I think. Uh, he's not ready for even this level of tier they're playing at. He's really not. Uh, he's, I, like, I can see the talent in him and why they tried it with him or why he was at least, you know, part of their academy team. Um, but like, this is a failed experiment for sure. Yeah, and basically I think now. it kind of confirms that MSL can't use oppers, in my opinion. Um, or, I, I, like, because he, he already tried, like, like a bunch of veteran players, having them take the op role, Pimp, and KGB come to mind. Those didn't work out. He tried this young, upcoming talent. That didn't work out. Uh, he has kept AZ for whatever reason, and their teamwork is worse than it ever was, so I don't know what AZ necessarily brings to the table Kirby had moments of being good but obviously that 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 ship has passed i think uh valde is actually really good on this lineup but like it doesn't really matter you know what i mean i mean it's, yeah it doesn't really matter because the like 
he's pretty much the only buddy, uh, the only person in this team right now that's like whatever. Yeah, MSL himself, yeah, he has like some sick uh, executes, but it's not really helping them, is it? So, I think this team is um, at its worst it's ever been. So, uh, it's, I, th- I think basically it's gotten to the point where I don't even have to pay attention to them anymore. Because I don't think they're even going to get to lands at this point. Which is too bad, because I did like their style at times. But man, they really should not have let go of config. That guy was that guy's a beast. That guy's a beast, and right now he's sort of like withering away in an A. Yeah, I, I, he, he else like I, I don't actually watch uh, online that at all. But like uh, when yeah. when I, when I saw the um when I saw the result, like there was this game apparently where config dropped forty seven, and then this team lost the series. Like okay, this team is fucking dead too. Listen, if you can't if you can't like get if you have a guy dropping forty seven, you can't win. It's over. It's fucking over. It's kind of a crazy thing, though. If you look at their performances, like some of these players have like crazy good performances here and there, but they just, they're just all over the place. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Optic for me. I mean, you know, t- not to not to uh, derail go on a tangent. Yeah, not to derail too much, but Optic is also one of those teams that's just it's not gonna last for very long. Like this is this is a team to just bridge the time until the next roster shuffle. Apparently, uh, as but. Uh, basically so they're gonna go to one land maybe two lands and then they're gonna be like whatever guys let's just uh mm-hmm. you know try try and try again yeah all right so now the last uh thing we'll talk about is dreamhack Marseille. and the reason this is the last thing we'll talk about is because basically it covers all the roster changes because there have been a all the teams sh- a shitload of roster changes since the last time we did this so uh we'll just we'll just go down the list and actually, we'll just skip the easy ones first. I don't want to talk about Valiants, Space Soldiers, Renegades, or Tyloo. Do you? <laughs> I, I mean, I want to talk about Space Soldiers in the sense that they're really scary right now. Like, I online? think this is a... Yeah, I mean, online at least, yeah. yeah. Um, this I feel like they potentially have... I think they have the potential to be, like, the next mouse sports in a sense, where they sort of, like, slowly but steadily creep up to be, like, a top team. Um... But who knows? Yeah, I'm not. I'm. I'm not for it. Like I don't. They because they've been together for so long. Like I. I literally have to see them like do well at a land. Yeah. And well, this is a good chance. So we we will see. Uh, I'm. I, I'm not. I'm not buying into that. Basically, another team I'm not buying into is Envious. I think that's like another dead team. Um, like RBK is the... sick and all, but like I don't think there's much hope in them. I feel like I could say the same to G2 right now, anyway. Yeah, so let's talk about another dead team, G2. So basically, uh, I'll explain it this way. In what, Over one year ago, I made this prediction on some podcast with DK and Vince, who both work at Double Tap now, and I said, I can make, make they, asked, they had a section called Make a Bold Prediction, and mine was, I think Existence will have the pick of the best French players in the year. I was this close. I was this close. I was like, a centimeter away, but it all got fucked up because NBK is like a true mastermind of the politics. But basically, what happened was G2 was going downhill or because they had they because they couldn't find any consistency. And Shox was like, listen, um, I forget I forget the guy's name, but basically like whoever whoever the CEO was G2 is like, listen, imagine me, Smith's existence, Kenny S. And one more, I forget who the fifth one was. Wouldn't that be a sick fucking team? I think it was Body actually. And then he was like, "Whoa, that's a fucking crazy idea." And then, and then he went to MBK. MBK is like, "Wait a second, wait a second. Let me, let me, uh, let me get these votes." So he gets Apex, he gets Kenny has Body on his side, and then Shocks is left out in the cold. But the G two manager was like, "Wait, wait a second. I can, I can actually run a Thunderdome here." So what's gonna happen is because. Shocks has to go through uh, surgery and recovery anyway. The rest of the guys will have, like, I don't know how many months. Like, I'm going to guess, like, three to five. Uh, my, that's my guess based off of the fact that the major is coming up in September. So, you want to, if that, so basically, if they don't make this work, I think they're going to go with the Shocks lineup. And so far, this G2, at least online, like, I haven't actually seen them play yet, but at least online, it doesn't seem to be going very well. Right? Pretty much. Mm-hmm. So yes, my prediction was it, just a little bit late. <laughs> it, I, w- I was just I was just about to say I I feel like there's a um there's a time when uh, you're gonna hit a strike gold with that one. Yeah. Uh, I, um. All right. It's coming. 
it's I mean the French scene right now is the French, the Swedish ones. I mean I mean, we've talked about this before, but I feel like the time of like these nationality based teams is sort of like dwindling anyway. Um, I think you I think, can do it if you get all the best players and like. The if you, I mean, yeah, players. obviously, if you get all the best players, sure. But at some point, people have to realize that all the all the best players for you for you and your own team aren't necessarily going to be the same from the same country. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you if you limit yourself to to the scope of that country, you're going to be doomed. Obviously, there are some like projects that have like try or are trying this right now for example sk that i still think aren't necessarily going to be that ex- uh, successful like even though they added stewie i'm not sh- i'm not too confident in this lineup i feel like they needed to replace bolts as well on top of it mm-hmm. um but i i do think that you know the the phases the whatever the, the the team liquids of this of the world right now they are the ones showing why you need to broaden your mind like you need to look past national borders um because you're, you're gonna run out of options very soon and i mean quite frankly i'm surprised the french still haven't considered that like oh huh we've we've sort of shuffled in pretty much any way imaginable at this point i guess except for that last one but we hate existence so what <laughs> should we do you know l- let's just swap again at some point they're just going to end up with the same I mean, they, they, had, like, they did bring well, except Maxwell, Maxwell's very underwhelming well yeah at the point at um, the time they brought him in anyway so I feel like, you know, yeah, if you look like a mouse sports phase, like these teams, they've shown that if you just have good players, it doesn't matter what language you speak. And quite frankly, do you really need to speak the same language to make calls like let's go B or let's go whatever? Mm-hmm. Um, like, I'm not saying that I'm not trying to underestimate the importance of communication. God knows that I think it's one of the reasons why SK is also going to struggle because they're currently trying to sacrifice communication for the sake of one player effectively. Yeah. Um, but I do think that at some point people are, or players are going to realize that, hey, guess what? We speak English pretty much 90% of our life anyway. Might as well transition in our CS sort of communication into English. And um, I mean, again, I, I, I will say like the culture is a bit different. And what I mean by culture is like how you think of the game, right? Well, yeah. Because like, like the entire problem with the NA scene before this latest iteration of Cloud9 and Liquid doing very well was like they're all like too um individual based so they didn't have any of the team component players to like actually make a good team for a long period of time so like there is a part of that or like if you if you threw that in with like sk like fall would be would kick them out on the curb very soon that's my guess right so it's it depends like i'm still 50 50 on it like i think it really it very it depends on who you have at the time basically which way you go that's that's no, that's my that's like that's the way you you should build it is like who is available right now that I can get. No, that's a good point, and uh, the sort of like the the approach or even like different culture, different sort of like lifestyle is actually very important when you when you form these teams. Um, I remember when um, Hanskin and like the the other two Swedes left Complexity in 2016, for example. They're like, yo, I mean, we we're still friends, but. We just realized that you know, like the the cultures of like us Swedes, like the calm Swedes, like a very laid back, but also like very quiet, uh, didn't necessarily mesh up too well with like the sort of like aggressive and not not like a negatively aggressive, but very loud, very like um, very um, Kyle, very, very very Kyle sort of approach. So I, I feel like they did come back huge... in the end, but then they kicked him. They, they, in did, the end. they they did come back in the end, but they kicked him, and I think that's just. That just shows you again that obviously you need to find players that you mesh well on a personal level and like a cultural level. Like you need to understand each other and you need to be able to communicate well with one another on like more than just language. But that's why I think that you know, even even in one language, you're not going to find players that like even in one national, in, uh, you know, in, in your own nationality, you're not going to find players that are necessarily or have the same philosophy, have the same approach to the game. Yeah, basically, like to... shocks and MEK are like two different spectrums. That's why this thing Basic, broke up. Yeah. That and that's why I think um, they shouldn't just try to look inside their own borders. I mean, ultimately they're gonna f- they're gonna figure it out themselves anyway if if they have to. Like if if at some point they are gonna run out of possible French combinations to try out, there's only a finite amount of uh, French CS players at this level. So at some point they're gonna figure out that hey, if this doesn't work, if we can't get past existence, or if if we don't want to join hands with existence, I guess maybe we could try international, but. Yeah. Uh, for now, I think um, 
these teams are not going to go anywhere, like NVS and G2. I think we both agree that they are not getting anywhere with this with these NAMs right now. Okay. Um, same thing with Gambit, actually. Um, Gambit has a problem. The problem is they have no in-game leader and decided, you know what? Seize did such a great job in Navi. Wait a second. He didn't do a great job, but fuck it. We're going to have him be in-game leader. So I think Gambit's basically dead as well. Um, such a shame, man. Because it's fucked up. Adren, Just like, Adren and Hobbit are like Hobbit. top 10 players. Like it's super... Uh, at, at least... Right on on a, on a like Adren super level is like top five I think. Yeah, like when he when he was like the when when Adren was like at his maximum under Zeus, he's like top five player for sure. Yeah, like he he was like battling for MVP basically of the entire year, like not just a tournament, like the entire year until Zeus left. And now this actually makes me think like um because the other team will naturally talk about is Navi, like I actually think Zeus should go back. I honestly think Zeus will go back as well. Like he, obviously he was. Didn't he tweet out like something very angrily when basically the whole simple, simple thing. thing happened? And I mean, I can understand like he left the major team to form like a potentially better team effectively, and then they decided to leave Zeus. Yeah, they're like, ah, oh, fuck it, we're we're gone. So I think if you, like, I think if you're Zeus, you're gonna go back to yeah, Zeus. Like even 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 if you just look at the way Zeus called on Gambit to Zeus Navi. And like even this like interview with Cyrus, where he basically says, "Yeah, it was way easier to call Gambit because he worked way better with the Kazakhstani guys." Because even though he was like this super angry motherfucker, like the Kazakhstani guys are all calm and composed and stuff. So like it works, it works, and Adrena super second caller whatever works, but he on Navi does not work. Not right now, and that's why also Navi is not like Navi. Navi still has, has a the firepower. Navi yeah, has they a still have. The... They still have a simple. They also have a flamey. Like, listen, simple um, alone, kind of like, he literally almost did win the entire tournament by himself. Like, that's how disgusting this guy is. It's crazy. He's so disgusting. Like, SK is like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's go with this CIS dude. This, like, that's how, that's so, how fucking crazy. This I'm dude legitimately is. so mad this this deal didn't happen. It's the, I would have. I, I would give my firstborn for this iteration of SK or like whatever organization they would be under. Like I, I, I heard it might happen still. Um, I would love it if they're just sitting out their contract or whatever. Yeah, because because basically it's just like basically it's just uh, Navi said like three months. So maybe three months from now, if the Stewie TK one doesn't work out, and I'm not certain it does, because I'm I'm basically in agreement with you. Like it doesn't like it feels like the same lineup with Bolt uh, with Phelps, except like with a lesser version of Phelps because I think Phelps was a better <laughs> exactly. than Stewie TK. So, and, and they didn't have to sacrifice communication for Phelps. Yeah, and like basically you're losing Taco, who was like the right hand man of uh, Cold Zero. So it's like, eh, not 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 feeling it as much. I will say, just in terms of pure talent on paper, they certainly have what it takes to win. I'm just not feeling it right now. Same, me and, neither. And imagine Cold Zero and Simple on a team. Imagine that. That would be fucking sick. I don't know. It's that's and then versus versus phase when Olaf Kottmeister comes back. Yes, I guess. Speak, sp- speaking speaking of, I guess, yeah. Right. Um, they obviously have existence of Olaf Meister. Um, I think their communication was, in my opinion, it was pretty clear that Olaf Meister just needed some time right now. Mm-hmm. Like you don't, you don't, you don't hire exist as a permanent. No way, hell no. Hell no. Um, and I think it makes sense to have exist with the team because I don't think anybody else. At this level of CS, would have agreed to be a stand-in at this crucial time. I, I, like, I imagine they try to get Taco, like, uh, but it didn't work out. But the, but that's the thing, right? Taco probably wants to be in a team where he can consistently play and like he yeah. can play without having to think. Oh, if is all my coming back, I guess I have to find a new team because he's gonna want to be at the major. Yeah. Exist likely won't be at the major, mm-hmm. um, and yeah. he probably wouldn't have been no matter which team he would have joined. Yeah. So I feel like it makes sense for him to join this team. It's gonna he's gonna learn a lot. I think he's gonna learn a lot from Kerrigan from the rest of the team. He doesn't respect Kerrigan with them. though. Huh? Like he doesn't respect Kerrigan at all. <laughs> well, he better. He, he better. Be- he, do better now. he better do it soon. Oh. <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, I I think all of my is gonna come back on time for the major probably. But mm-hmm. uh, for now, this face can't just. I don't it's... losing all of my sir. Obviously, you're gonna be a worse team. Uh, I mean, I think but, they do. They did have to make a change, but exist was not the change. <laughs> exist was not the change. It was not the change. So, uh, uh, so yeah. We'll... I mean, it feels it feels kind of underwhelming. Imagine going to like a, you know, instead of instead of what Kerrigan 
and Ulfmeister holding B, banana, whatever, it's exist Kerrigan. Obviously, you're not going to put exist Kerrigan there, but yeah, you know, just just a, it's, yeah. it's just a different uh, caliber. Um, I will say like phase, even though like I, I obviously I think we're both underwhelmed by the exist pickup for now, even though like that's literally like the like the cheapest and most viable choice they probably could have gotten, all things considered. Yeah. I still still underwhelmed by it. Still could win because they still have a Nico and still have a Guardian, still have a Rain. Like that's all like stacked this fucking team is they could still win it's just they yeah. they didn't win before with their previous lineup so why would i believe in them now you know what i mean maybe maybe exist brings a little bit of nip magic yeah nip ma- to, the, to, to their finals yeah well maybe but i doubt that i doubt it as well i doubt that uh let's talk about i guess we can but talk I'm... about nip uh nip. Oh, nip oh why is this team even here yeah I, basically I, I legitimately have no idea why this team is even here they're, they're invited uh no. I haven't seen them, but I wasn't that impressed with them last time I saw them. Like I think, uh, I think they got the right players, Drake and Rez, Dennis. But they're still they still lack an in game leader for me because I'm I'm almost certain Dennis doesn't want to stay as in game leader, like almost like a hundred percent certain that's not the case. But I like I'm pretty sure Forrest and Get Right are never going to leave this organization, and so it's gonna and I'm not even sure why you would kick Drake and Rez, and Dennis is basically I think their best player, so it's like. They've kind of stuck. Yeah, last last time we saw them was at what Malmo or something? Or was uh, it I am IEM, IEM World Championship. IEM, maybe? O- Oakland? No. What what is this? It was like the last big I, tournament. I kind of kind of it's kind of yeah. Lost Liquid. I lost to Liquid, which is okay. But then they like who, who did they win? They beat G two and North. It's like whatever. Yeah, North um, is free. I think. Um, I mean, we, we've we've talked about this team plenty of times. Like, they're players on paper when they show up. You know, like Rez Draken, they can definitely do crazy shit. Mm-hmm. But I I think we both agreed at the time that they're basically one or two roster changes away from being like a decent team. Yeah. Right now, um, with Dennis, they got like a really good free agent that to build a team around, to build a team around with. Basically, because like you said, Forrest and Get Right are probably never going to leave the organization. So, who knows? Yeah, really. who knows? I, I think they're basically just stuck for a while. Yeah. Um, let's talk about mouse. But the thing is, the, okay, the thing ahead. is, j- just to quickly get back to the NIP. The thing is, with the state of the teams that we've talked uh, about thus far, and depending on how the, the seating works after the group stage, like I could see NIP still making a run to the semifinals because they like in, t- in terms of individual play. Again, if Drake and Rez show up, and if for, like if all of them show up, like they still have a lot of firepower behind them. Um, yeah. So I feel like like Den- you know Nip is yeah. like if they if they if they show up, that's like the question. If they show up, right? But you know we talk about them and stuff for the dead. But I feel like if I compare them to the teams that we've talked about thus far, I think they have better chances than say G two, Envious, perhaps mm-hmm, even yeah. Gambit. No, um, I think Gambit's really bad. So yes, the like, gambit's yeah. only map left they have is overpass. Yeah, <laughs> like it's so sad actually how true that is. <laughs> like they literally only have one map left because basically all the stuff they learned from Zeus is gone, or maybe it's like Zeus and Adren because I'm pretty sure Adren's a very smart player, but it's like it's all gone. It's all gone. They're gone. Um. Okay, so we'll talk about a much happier team, Mouse. Uh, I'm Mouse. I think is legitimately like. Them and Fnatic, I think, should be considered the favorites to win. What do you think? Yes, yes, they should be. Um, the thing is, that's that that's the thing, right? We 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 put them in the favorite position because that's where they need to be. Like they just won that weird ass event. Was it not Starlet? It was some weird ass event. Uh, Fnatic won West Egg, Egg and uh, yeah, I think Mouse won Star Ladder. Yeah, or was it Starlet? Yeah, it probably was Starlet. Something along those lines, right? But yeah. we were. We've kind of wanted to see this uh, see, see this from them a while now to basically win a title because, like, if if the top teams like right now, Phase is not winning any finals. SK like there's SK no good teams right problems, now. Problems like, Bas- yeah, there's basically no top team right now aside yeah. from Phase, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and even Phase doesn't win the titles as mentioned. So yeah, like Phase made, sort of... Phase also made the roster change, so it's like you can't really call them top team yeah. anymore. So this is right now the time for Mouse Sports to strike effectively. Like this is the best time for them to win titles and wreck up those uh, those first places. Same thing with Fnatic. Um, I do... Yeah. Same thing. Same thing for, with Fnatic for sure. I do think Fnatic is probably their toughest opponent in this entire event. 
Um, but I still think that Mouse, Mouse Sports, in my opinion, is I think Mouse Sports is the better team. Consistently, is the better team. Mm -hmm. Fnatic, when they pop off, they are, I think they can take down Mouse for sure. But um, uh, again, we talked about this a while. Uh, we've, we've talked about this a lot, uh, a lot. But Golden and Lecro, there are times when they just don't show up. Like obviously, this happens to everybody, but I feel like this happens to them a little bit more so than it does to like, Mouse Sports. Example. I'm like fine-ish with Lecro not showing up because he's like kind of new. My problem with that team is like obviously you know Golden's not that great of a player, like Crims is a god basically, but like the final two like are so iffy for me. JW hasn't been like that great for a long time, yeah. and like Flusha only showed up once like super god mode against Gut Face. I was like, what like what the fuck like did they literally like time travel for, uh, Flusha from 2015? Like how does this happen? What is going it's on? Cool. But beyond Maybe that, it's like a... but beyond that he has he's not like nearly close to that level. So it's like that's my problem. Maybe that's like a time traveling trap door on the Katowice stage. Yeah. So they literally just opened the trap door and they moved the flusher from two thousand. They should bring back the uh, that, they should bring back Virus Pro from twenty fifteen also. Like that that <laughs> they really need that got version that All right. um, look you, look, I believe in I, I believe in magic and Esther should have sales, but there's there's nothing to bring back the <laughs> Nothing. Not even a Lazarus pit could bring them back at this point. Nope. Nope. It'd be like a, it'd be like a sort of like half dead version. That'd be like, maybe, maybe like a quarterfinals appearance here and there, but that'd be it. Way better than they are now. Put that way. Yeah, well, that's true. Uh, all right, another team, uh, Stralis. I basically, as far as I know, they're very good online, and they were decent. Like the last time I saw them, pretty solid. So we'll have to see. Basically, like I, I only judge teams on on land, and since they haven't, there has been a land recently. I can't really say much about Astralis. How do you feel about them? To me, Astralis has always been the best one. They haven't really been in the spotlight. Mm -hmm. Like, that's when they've really been sort of like the best one. When people start having expectations for them, that's usually when they when they prefer the worst. When they which... weather away. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I do think they're not necessarily in the spotlight. But at the same time, this is sort of like same argument that we had for Mouse and Fnatic goes to Astralis as well. Like, if Astralis wants to be a top team again, like, this has to be the moment where they sort of, like, strike and at least place, like, top four consistently at, like, the next couple of events and potentially even have, like, a finals uh, appearance. But I, at least from what we've last seen from them, I just don't see it happening. But like you said, um, they have been performing online, so who knows, really. Um, this is going to, this is sort of like the, the beauty of this sort of like long break that we've had right like mm -hmm. even though all the previous data that we've had uh, up until now is sort of like nullified because these teams are now coming in with like fresh ideas perhaps fresh minds uh device obviously had that long break uh at the end of the year yeah so say. he should be back right now he should be yeah he should there's be back no excuse right now. basically um, um for device at least yeah and they've had time to work with me just now which i think is, is going to be the biggest factor for this team mm -hmm. me just um making him work I, I will say like this is a funny point kind of an off-tangent point, but basically, like, there is no S-ranked team in CSGO. You know what I mean? Basically, there's, like... I, and what I mean by s rank is, like, um, if you ever follow Brood War, I don't think you have, but basically, what they did was they tiered players, and in, in the highest tier was what they called the s rank, basically, the god among gods, because basically, mm -hmm. the only the only people these people lost to was each other. So you had Flash, oh, right. Bisu, Jadong, Stork. They were, like, s tier. And then you have like A tier, which is like very good players. They could be everybody below that. And on their best day, maybe they could challenge with the S rank players, but that was it. Right now, all of CSGO has no S rank team where like they can only lose to each other. Like they can, they all can lose to each other. Like, yes. And, but that's, that's why like there's, I think, or in my opinion, there, sh there is added pressure to these teams because they know if, like this is the they... best chance to win. Yeah. Then, then they, yeah. Pretty much, like, this is their chance to become that s rank team. Like, you know, in, in Dota, for example, we've had, I mean, I think you could probably apply that same logic to, you know, Virtus Pro, Liquid, Secret, and probably Newbie for, like, the last... Yeah, basically... Actually, you could probably even remove Newbie from that list for the last, yeah, like, No, it's like, just, like, the, like the other months. three for, like, months until Virtus Pro took... Until it's just Virtus Pro right now, basically. Yeah. And that's that's the thing, right? Um, if, if, if all these teams were in disarray, that's where everybody else would be like, oh, hey, I could be like a top team. But right now, like teams like Vici Gaming or Vici J Thunder or whatever, even Optic, EG, whatever you want, um, they, they don't really have any chance of hoping to, to win sort of a big like break win. into that fold. Yeah. 
So that's why I think um, in CS right now, like right now, this tournament, this tournament season, as it begins, this is where these Astralis, is, this Fanatics, fin Mouse Boards, those teams that don't have a lot of like issues really to speak of. Like there's no injury that prevails. There's no drama and sort of like roster roster changes. They um, pretty much yeah, they just have the full roster. They should have no excuses not to uh, not to win here. And um... actually, I do. I, there's one team I think will win. It's not Miles and Fnatic though. It's Liquid. I think Liquid should win this one. Oh yeah, because Liquid, Cause Liquid even point. even though they made a roster change, it's an upgrade. It's like a direct yeah, upgrade. It's a straight up upgrade for sure. Right. So, my guess is Liquid wins this one because they were already fucking sick already. Like they have like some weird issues towards the end, but it's like on and off. It's not really consistent. But they're all young players. I think they'll get over it eventually. And Taco himself is like one of the. Apparently, he's like, in my opinion, he's like one of the better like team players we've seen. So I feel like if you put him in that system and if you and he works well with Zeus and he knows like how a bunch of these players play, I think he could elevate them to like st- basically stabilize them a little bit and maybe that's all they need. That'd be dope. Right? I feel like no, if this just on paper, this liquid team should be one of those S rank teams if we like talk about the next couple of months. Yeah. Um, it, it feels like it feels like this is their time, like this is the time, right? Uh, that's yes. my guess. And now, it's, okay, go ahead. It's kind of satisfying as well to to know that they're like able to perform because we've we've known this about some of their players for a long time now. Mm-hmm. Elish, Nitro. Yeah. Um, now they have Naf. Even now they have Naf, and obviously Twist as well. Like all these players, we knew beforehand what they were capable of or what they could potentially be capable of, but we've just never seen it from them on a consistent basis, and certainly not um, at this high level, but now knowing that they can do this, this it's, I don't know, it's just sort of satisfying because you know that the sort of like talent is not just talent anymore. It's actually skill. Yeah. And, um, that's, that's why we can confidently say they are very likely going to be a team to win this tournament, potentially if more tournaments going into the future. Yeah. So I actually have liquid winning this one. I think this is a good time for them, but we will see, like, nobody really knows. Like, it's a very, like, like I, I, I basically wrote a blog post. I didn't post it today, but I'll probably post it tomorrow. It's like, that's called uh, DreamHack Marseille Schrodinger's Tournament. Because <laughs> we don't know who's living or who's dead until this tournament yeah. is, is over. Mm-hmm. All right. And then for the final team, I say this for last because it is about the most diabolical mastermind that has ever graced the CSGO scene. It the is about... The ADD master, chess master? Yeah, the 80th dimensional chess master himself, FNS. Uh-huh. If, you ne- if you haven't seen the gigantic post I wrote about... This man and his machinations. You should go read it. Uh, the twenty, the uh, mastermind of the twenty first century, FNS. Uh, basically, he has he he has set a motion and plan dating all the way back to three years ago, starting with Tarek, move, moving from CLG to Cloud Nine, and has finally been fulfilled. And here he is on Cloud Nine as the leader. It's uh, <laughs> it's. First of all, a great post. I loved reading it. Um, second, I, I do think this is a this is a good f- fit for them. Like F- FNS, mm-hmm. um, I've I've seen it. I've seen it firsthand. Well, not really firsthand. I was actually still very far away, but uh, I, I I saw what he can do with complexity and like no offense to complexity. I mean, obviously, you know, it's my team, but or, you know, I consider it my team, but uh, they aren't necessarily of the caliber that you know you, you see at c9 right now in terms of individual skill at least they're not there yet mm-hmm. um but what he was able to do with complexity i think if if you give him enough time with, with cloud nine he's going to transform them into, into a monster of a team um i i'm not i think one issue i have with this team right now is the fact that they sort of wanted to kick skadoodle basically and then kept him <laughs> uh, and then they kept him <laughs> basically it tells me that whoever they had planned for a replacement just wasn't available at last minute effectively and that's just not a good sort of like sign for any team really like yeah. oh guess what the the player that we actually wanted is actually not available to us anymore so let's just go with the guy that we were ready to kick mm-hmm. um and i mean there's good reasons for why they wanted to remove or replace skadoodle right yeah like he, apparently we, it was like out of motivation about... and shit like well that and of course the fact that Going into the major, he was one of the biggest question marks. In, and then in the after the major, the... he's still one of the biggest question marks. <laughs> yes. Um, so in that sense, I think I don't think this Cloud Nine team is like I do think this Cloud Nine team is going to be better than what we've seen from the last one. Like at the end of the last obviously, one, at least. Ob- yeah, at, yeah, at the end of the last. We're one. not obviously, talking about like his side. major status. Like, yeah, like I don't think even I, like I don't think uh, this Cloud Nine will reach that peak. 
But it, it feels like it should be more consistent. It should be more consistent for sure. Um, actually, one of the things that I do think is worth noting is that I feel like FNS out of all the IGLs that we have at this at this event, or at out of most IGLs anyway, it's actually like no offense to FNS, but he's probably actually not the most skilled one. Like, mm-hmm. in ter- like obviously in in CS, it's sort of one of the issues anyway, right? That yeah. the IGL tends to be the least skilled or the the bottom fragger of your team. Yeah. And I think that's a big issue actually with FNS. And if if we wanted to say something negative about this roster move for them, I think that's actually that that FNS isn't necessary. Like beforehand, what you had like Tarek as your IGL and yeah. he just clutches your rounds run after round. Yeah, but here's the thing: but FNS like, is not necessarily that guy. But he's taking off a load off of Tarek, so maybe Tarek. True. True. Can bring it. And I mean, and like uh, when we talk about Skadoodle, right? Like what the prospective p- people they were looking at was like, I assume it was JDM. Like that was the rumor going Probably. around, and Probably. then I was I also threw in J- Ricky in there because like he did work well with Ricky before, and he Ricky was a free agent, but like Skadoodle, it, uh, Skadoodle in terms of like peak, he was very very good in twenty fifteen. So if somehow FNS can resurrect that Skadoodle, then it doesn't really matter if FNS frags on the server or not. No, that's true, and that's that's why um you know IGLs in in, in CS are so important, and why teams a lot of times struggle without a proper IGL because then suddenly like you don't get the best out of the the rest of the players so mm-hmm. that's why people feel comfortable like you said basically sacrificing um sort of like one position yeah for the for the greater good of the other four position in that sense yeah but um i don't know just just wanted to bring it up you know yeah it, it, it's you know, it's, a, they're, 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 it's they're, a fair thing to point out cuz it's not like yeah. this dude's like uh Chris J or something or yeah. fallen right Hey, even Kerrigan has stepped it oh, up Kerrigan, a lot in Kerrigan his face. Kerrigan was like randomly really good sometimes. Yeah, like yeah. yeah so it, no, there were times where he was top fragger of the team. Yeah, I remember there was like a tournament uh, where like, he's top fragging for the teams. Like, what yeah. the fuck is this? But yes, you have, Gar- you have Guardian, you have Rain, you have Nico, and then <laughs> uh, Kerrigan is Kerrigan. top fragging. Hey, okay, that's a uh, that's a thing. Well, I think that covers it for this one. Uh, do you? I don't know if we ever won those, but do you have like a pick to win? Like mine was Liquid. Um, I think Liquid's for a pick. I do still think that Massports yeah. is also in the running. Mm-hmm. I, so I would, I think for me, it's more of a toss up between the team more so than like a, a straight up uh, one answer. Uh, obviously, I think we both agree that Fnatic is sort of like the third team behind that, yeah. I guess. Um, but then who but knows? For, like for maybe, me, maybe if like SK shows yeah. up, we're screwed or Astral shows up, we're screwed. Like yeah. a bunch of these. See, that's the thing, right? There's a lot of question marks behind these teams because we just haven't seen them on LAN and like you said, online performances don't really matter um, mm-hmm. in CS anyway. So who knows, really? I, I do kind of want to see Astralis show up because, I mean, Astralis still have some really great players, like yeah. seeing, what, Dupree, Device, Zipnix. Um, and I, I just want to see Ma- Magisk um, resurrected. Be u- utilized, yeah. resurrected, utilized properly as well. Mm-hmm. That'd be that'd be dope. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, I think that ends up... Also, also right. be ready for the simple show. Also, you be know, ready. Navi, my, uh, Simple could win. Navi. Simple could fucking win this. Just by himself. Assuming, See, that's, Ed, that's, that's, assuming Edward isn't that bad, yes. That, that's what makes watching him so, so fun. Like, you just know it's basically 1v5 or 1v, 1v9. 1v8, 1v8 in a lot of cases. Could be yeah, one... 1v9 sometimes, but more like 1v8 at least. It's fun, right? It's like, I, I think I wrote an article basically saying he's the best show in esports because, like, it's yeah. literally him versus the world. It's super fun to watch. Um, but yeah. I think that uh, covers everything we want to talk about. You have any shout outs, Complexity? Uh, yeah, obviously, shout out to Complexity. Uh, been a lot of fun working with them. We have a lot of stuff planned, so check it out. Um, what else? I don't really have a lot of shout outs. I, I've been meaning to write something Dota related, but I just don't have the time. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's why this show only happens like once every two weeks or so, because time's not uh, something I can afford right now. All right. Uh, That's the end of the show. See you guys later.